And from that post alone, you have confirmed that you are a racist. Hating, discriminating on, and being prejudiced towards somebody because of their skin colour or their race is racist. That's the definition. And don't put me in the category of all white people because uh, I'm not fully white. How many times do I have to go over this? Let's just skip over the fact that this person clearly doesn't understand racism as a system of oppression with a hierarchy. And we'll focus on the last thing they said. Don't put me in the category of all white people because I'm not fully white. Firstly, I have no idea who you are. I did not tag you in the video. You put yourself in the category of all white people, otherwise you wouldn't have felt the need to make that video and make that statement. Secondly, this is how I know people like that don't actually understand race, let alone racism. Because let's use the same logic for me. If you look at me, what do you think my race is? Just off bat. Most of y'all would have said black, right? Imagine, just try to fathom the idea of me responding back saying, actually, I'm not fully black. Don't put me in the category of all black people because I'm like 3% Scottish because of colonization. That would be ridiculous, right? Because when you look at me, your initial perception is what? black that's why the concept of race is so complex because it's not supposed to make sense it has never made sense for the millionth time back in 17th 18th century europe these europeans pulled this concept of race out of their asses and then came up with a bunch of arbitrary rules to go along with it quite literally your race could change depending on who is looking at you depending on which country you're in and how they view race depending on your shade your hue your race could literally change so it's complicated for the people who are in that little in-between where they might be perceived as white one day and another race another day. You can deny your whiteness as much as you want, but at the end of the day, if someone looks at you and perceives you as white, you're going to be treated as such. And the more people who perceive you as white, the more privilege that comes along with it. It's not supposed to make sense. It's not fair. But the response of, I am not fully white, therefore I can't be racist, is probably one of the most ridiculous arguments I've ever heard in my life. It's been a while since I made one of these videos because I'm tired of re-explaining the same thing, but if you genuinely want to understand race and racism, click the link in my bio. I have a ton of resources, literally so many, and word of advice, if you have not read one, one singular book about race and racism, you probably shouldn't feel super confident jumping online and talking about it. Because reading a definition that has absolutely zero nuance is gonna screw you over, like it just did, just now. all gonna be safe and we're all gonna have a great time what in the jesus christ was that oh did you get the japanese menu yeah they gave me the english menu <laughs> it's okay it's okay i'm lucky to be able to experience racism like this because i'm a minority here I wore a crop top the other day and everyone was staring at me. I was like, oh my god, oppression. I'm gonna make a YouTube channel about my experiences because the world needs to know. The greatest shinobi of their time, right? The best of the best, undefeated ninja champs? Then why did you- Because I'm going to be greater than any of them! Me! Naruto! The next Tokage! A ninja legend! Then everyone will have to stop disrespecting me and look up to me! Believe it!
I think I'm gonna start clutching my bag when white people walk by just so they can find out how it feels. Okay, here, watch me practice. <gasps> I'm low-key shaking, that was so embarrassing. <laughs> You said you should kill that I said I'm no fuck that You said come on be a man What? You're a total anti-sexist A patriarchy fighter But your whole worldview collapses The moment there's a spider Cool, I get it, this is the real you It's a pleasure, nice to meet you Shit like this brings the movement down Everyone's a feminist until there is a spider around Fight. Hmm, funny Yes but not funny, haha. Ha. Funny, weird. My 10-year-old got really mad at me the other day. You see, the plan was to spend the afternoon getting the house in order and cleaning as a family. So I give everyone their tasks and we all go to do them. When suddenly I hear my 10-year-old grumbling and frustrated from the room she's cleaning. And while that's a whole mood, it's unlike her. So I went to check on her and she was mad at me. You see, she thought I was being unfair, not because of the things I asked her to do, but because I asked her sisters to do less things and easier things. From her perspective in that moment, I was being unfair. She had every right to be mad. The thing is, her perspective wasn't wrong, but it was limited, and I think we all need someone to challenge our views sometimes, so we had a conversation. I asked, are you and your sisters the same ages? Are they capable of the same things as you? And she said no. Then I said, when you were their age, did you have to do the same things you're doing now or the same things they're doing now? And it was like a light bulb moment. I saw it. I said, I think it's important to remember, while yes, you have more responsibilities, you also have more privileges. I said, it's not about equality, it's about equity. And then we had a side conversation to discuss what that meant. And then I asked her, do you think it would be fair if I treated you the exact same way I treated your four-year-old sister? And she's like, no. I said, exactly. I'm trying my best to meet you all where you're at with my expectations and your needs, but I'm always willing to discuss if you think I'm getting it wrong. She's like, yeah, but I just really don't want to do this. And I was like, oh, that complaint is better because it's focused on how you're feeling without the comparison making it worse. But also, we all have to do things we don't want to sometimes. And she's like, yeah, I know. But she felt a lot better, got her job done in like 10 minutes. Whenever I'm having serious conversations with my kids, I ask a lot of questions to keep them engaged because when you're just talking at someone, you're walking a fine line into lecturing and no one likes to be lectured. A reminder for my OG followers and a message for my new followers. Yes, I'm magical. Yes, I'm motivational. Yes, I am a nurturer. But what I will never be is your magical, motivational, mammy, Negro. I'm not that person. You are going to get a lot of motivational things from me. You're going to get spiritual things from me. And you're also going to get the truth from me. And that's not going to feel good sometimes. That's not going to taste good sometimes. What this means for my white followers is I'm not here to coddle you. What this means for my straight followers is 
I'm not here to coddle you. What this means for my cisgendered men followers is I'm not here to coddle you. Because of my marginalization and all of my intersections, there's going to be times when I come at you with something that is a very hard truth and I'm not going to put no sugar on it. I'm not going to coat it in honey. I'm not going to take your feelings into consideration. I'm going to say what the fuck needs to be said, how it needs to be said. And sometimes your feelings are going to get hurt and that is your responsibility, not mine. When you go through my content, you will see that I have respect. You will see that I speak with compassion. You will notice that I give a lot of grace and a lot of mercy. And this is not going to change. But do not act surprised when I come from the left and snatch your entire soul. Do not act surprised when I speak about racism, when I speak about homophobia, transphobia, when I speak about colorism, when I speak about all those things from a deep and real and intimate perspective. Do not be surprised when sometimes you get called out. This doesn't lessen any of my motivational or magical content. I'm a full person. I'm an actual person. What I am not is your magical, motivational, mammy negro. No. If you can't handle me at my humanity, fuck off and get off of my positivity. That's it. That's the post. I love you. I live you. Thank you for your support. Get up, cocksuckers. Salute the flag. Get up, everybody. Get up. It's Memorial. Yes, but not funny. Huh? I mean, if they're going to compare it to BLM, they might as well be prepared for the moment when they're like a year removed, maybe six months removed, and they have to say, oh my God, remember when we were like really passionate about like abortion rights? Like, why were we all putting pink squares in our Instagram bios? <laughs> Rate my dog. Do it. Clock emoji. Your dog looks like Rhett from Good Mythical Morning. It would be a true honor to hear a review of this monster I call a pet named Bubba. Bubba is a dumb name. Uh, this is how frat boys look at me when I tell them that their sports betting is a gambling addiction and that they should get some help. I don't know if you're still doing this. Neither do I. This animal is incredibly phallic. Rate my cat. His name is Kiko. He knows I would take a bullet for him. Your cat looks like he's balding. Miss Piggott, you spelled my last name incorrectly. It's two G's, two T's. Get it right. These dogs are boring dogs to look at. I don't know what they're like personality-wise, but he just kind of looks like a cow if a cow was a dog. Too long. Didn't read. This dog would fit right in in the Wallace and Gromit TV series. This dog looks like a character from Flushed Away. He looks like a rat, but made of clay. Please rate my dog. I'll do anything. Pay me. This is how I look when someone's telling me a story and all of a sudden they start whispering. 
Man, why we're being so secretive now? Can you rate my dog Merlot? Anything you say will be her next Instagram bio. I don't care about your dog, he kinda got human eyes, but you look like the bitch from Riverdale. So today I decided I wanted to be like those art girlies on TikTok who do amazing collages. And I genuinely think I was on the right track. It was very not political. But then I found this, that's Putin. And then I found this. And I was like, this would be a missed opportunity. So anyways, this is my collage. I'm gonna walk you through it. We have son of a bitch in a sun, obviously. We have Hyundai, sponsored by Hyundai, because capitalism. It started out as like a landscapey thing. It said journey to the end of the world. But once I found this stuff, I was like, okay, we're making a journey to Ukraine. I had this woman for like layers rejoicing. I was like, that's shady. She shouldn't be happy. So I put shady on her and that fixed what was already there about the collage. We have a red stoplight, obviously. The UN refugee agency, duh. We have a donate link because we are not performative activists here. And then lastly, we have have good housekeeping because the vast majority of the bad stuff happening in our society is not happening by accident it's happening because the systems we have in place were meant to turn out this way so that's my collage i hope you like it Okay. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> Last year, Canada Day celebrations were cancelled to show support to Indigenous people after 215 graves were found on former residential school grounds. But this year, all the celebrations are resuming. Meanwhile, the numbers have gone from 215 to over 10,000. But no news sources are talking about it. The government's not talking about it. Nobody is talking about it. Shouldn't our country be even more devastated this year than they were last year? Here's a reminder that allyship is not a one-time thing. And I strongly encourage you to wear orange again this year. And to consider never celebrating the genocide of Canada ever again. This country was formed on genocide, and anybody who says different needs to take a history lesson. Residential schools were already in place for many years before Canada even officially became Canada. 139 residential schools were open. 11 out of 139 have been searched. And there are over 10,000 graves. 10,000 of our children who never made it home. This is how I dress masculine as a gender fluid nakabi. I tend to wear button-down shirts from the men's section that are very loose-fitting with suits over them to give maximum coverage while also keeping a masculine look. I also wear loose-fitting pants and jeans from the men's section. And lastly, I wear um, a very bland <laughs> niqab typically. Um, and I typically wear this black one. It's um, very easy to put on very quick um, if I don't feel like styling it. Um, and it still makes me feel a bit masculine because it kind of brings out my shoulders. But yeah, that's basically it. Bye! Indigenous History, Part 92, Day 26. Etiquette. Back during the days of old, you couldn't just show up at another nation without giving some sort of notice. It was not only seen as an act of aggression to show up without warning, but also was considered very rude. Go and alert them that we are on our way! Runners from one nation would go on ahead and let them know when they were coming so that that way the other nation would be able to sell out accommodations, food, a feast, and if they're coming to trade, set out their goods and know when to look out for them. Once the visiting nation came within view of the village or campsite or what have you, then they would stay at just distance so they would be seen and heard and they would sing out a psalm. That's kind of like their way of ringing a doorbell. Hey, is that them? It must be. They're singing the hay psalm. Let's go welcome them. Who the heck is that? They're not acknowledging anything. It must be an attack. Get him!
Now, obviously, these days, things are a little different. So when you know you're going on to another nation's land and you're at the borders, put some tobacco down and offer up a prayer, letting the ancestors know that you're there for a visit to watch over you and to let them know that you're coming peacefully and with a good mind. If you're visiting a home on another nation and you know that they have elders living with them, it's always a good idea to be polite and courteous and bring them a little gift. If you don't have one available, then some tobacco works as well. If you're visiting an indigenous home, it's likely you will be offered food, whether it's a light snack or a whole meal, but what you never ever do is refuse it. It's a grave insult to refuse that and you always take it because it's tradition to look after your guests. And with that, thank you for hearing my words. All right, so a lot of people don't know about carnival games. This is just one. It's called the African dip, also known as the coon dip or the inward dip, right? Nowadays, it's been modernized to be the dunk the clown game. But yeah, before they had a black person up there and they would throw baseballs at the person and at the target because they didn't used to have nets all the time. And the man running it used to have a catchy little slogan. It was hit the trigger, dunk the nick. Exactly. And yeah, of course, this happened a really long time, except it didn't. Most of these games came around in the 1910s, and the last one didn't end until the 1960s, the late 1960s. So let's think about that. But yeah, there's like two or three more that I can think of off the top of my head. So if y'all want to hear about them, just let me know. How not to look racist in Edwardian clothes. First, avoid wearing racist political symbols. Like this? No, like that sash. But this is a women's suffrage sash. You know the gold stripe on that sash represents an 1867 referendum where women suffrage leaders worked with openly white supremacist politicians to get votes for white women at the expense of black people? Oh. that trans men are not all skinny, wafy, little boyish looking dudes. Have y'all ever fucking seen a trans bear? Magical! Oh my god, magical! Danse everyone, come get ready with me for a powwow. So it starts off with my braids being wrapped and then I'm putting on my knee-high socks. I put on my beaded moccasins and my beaded leggings. The reasoning for the knee-high socks is so I can safety pin my leggings to the socks so they don't fly around when I'm dancing. Next are my otter furs. And now it's time for the fun part, putting on all my beadwork. First thing I do is put on my beaded hair ties. Next is my beaded headband, which is secured at the back with an elastic. Now it's time to put on my plume. Okay, plume is on, we're looking deadly. Ladies, shake your head, do a plume check. We don't want it falling out. Here I am putting on the actual dress. This is a new dress my mom made for me. I love all of the graduating purples. I sped this part up, but I zipped this dress up in the front and then I put on my white belt. I swear I've had this belt forever. After that, we're all ready to go. I hope you all have an amazing powwow season. Trans masks, this is your sign to sew top surgery scars onto your plushies. and I have type 4 hair. It's not the most groundbreaking thing in the world to be natural with my hair texture, but as we have seen with media, 
kinky coily hair is not celebrated but the hardest part isn't just going natural it's remaining natural i've had a lot of pressure over my six-year journey to straighten my hair not just for it to look better but for it to be more manageable and i really hate that my hair is not a nuisance it's not a chore to do and i found that developing this mindset has helped me remain natural and pour even more love into my hair Stop playing with me for I turn you to a song. Stop playing with me for I turn you to a song. Hey, bitch, I'm attractive. Can't fuck with you no more. I'm fasting. Uh, bitch, I'm attractive. I couldn't help but to feel away when I saw like a lot of these. I couldn't um, wait to leave the island like, to talk about these. Like overly exaggerated, like body features, you know, breasts, the hips, like just overly exaggerated. Even these dolls with like the black paint and like the pretty color paint all over it. These dolls just remind me of like mammies, you know? And even like I saw. Um, a lot of like the artwork where a black woman's body's features were like just overly exaggerated wide extra wide hips it just reminds me of like caricatures you know am i tripping like let me know if these don't remind you of like mammies Let's break down Dove's very racist body wash ad. Hey, what's up? Hello, this is Ike with the Tiny Mike, back with another blatantly racist breakdown. Now, at first glance, you might look at this and be like, oh, what's wrong? But there's kind of a... As you can see, there's a black woman who's taking off her shirt. It's a Dove commercial, and she's turning into a white woman. This is reinforcing stereotypes that black is dirty as it is promoting a cleaning product. And this is not the first time this sort of thing has happened. It was a super racist reoccurring theme in the early 1900s. So it's pretty hard for me to believe that a soap company wouldn't have done research to see how this sort of thing may have played out over time. There's a whole industry focused on skin lightening and whitening products based on the terrible stereotypes about how dark skin is dirty or looked down upon or so on and so forth. So for Dove to make this blunder is a big deal and super harmful to people of color. Let me know what you think about this ad in the comments and follow for more. That's not normal and I think you know you should maybe get some help or something. I literally had an argument with one of my white friends about this last night. I explained that due to lived experiences, I learned at a very early age not to automatically trust, not to feel comfortable around, and not to think, even for a moment, that they have my best interests at heart. There was just a lot of entitlement and manipulation, and I know what's right, I know what's better. It's like, if you feel comfortable around that, okay, I don't. And she's like, but I'm not like that. And it's like, okay, so you're a good person. You're an individual. But do you automatically feel safe around other white people like yourself? Do you feel slightly more uncomfortable when you're around, you know, people that are not white? Well, I feel safer around people like me, other indigenous people, other non-whites. Two of my favorite things in the entire world are horror movies and media analysis. So like with that, I fucking hate the final girl trope and how it's like seen as like a feminist trope because like, yeah, the final girl is resourceful and she survived the story, but it's not fucking feminist. Like, let me contextualize this for you. A final girl is the last girl alive in a slasher horror movie. And since slashers are a very distinctly American genre directed by almost exclusively white men, like 
the final girl is just the pinnacle of the male gaze like she is what society deems acceptable for women like this trope is not feminist in the slightest because like you can't be feminist when the only people that get to survive your stories are skinny white virgins this is actively putting down women of color sexually active women queer women plus size women etc go did i say something